Okay, let's uh, take a look at uh, something here. Got out the uh, supercell and a couple uh, quarter inch neodymium iron borons. I'm going to place one below the supercell in this exact same position. The only difference will be is that uh, there will be a separation of uh, hair underneath a quarter of an inch between these two magnets, obviously due to the glass. So this will be the position each time. I'm going to show you something that uh, I've not seen myself or anybody else show in video before. So I'm going to place the one magnet underneath the uh, supercell, and I'm going to bring the other one right there. And so now the one underneath, of course, is hanging. Uh, via the uh, dielectric acceleration towards the first one. Let me zoom in a little bit. And of course, you really don't see any light other than the LEDs that you're seeing peripherally, of course, around uh, the uh, rim of the supercell. The only real lines we actually see right here uh, is a plane of inertia. Of course, right now we're actually looking at a reflection of the magnet. It's reflected in the glass because of angle incidence equals angle of reflection. So you see a few lines right here along the plane of inertia. And the only time that the light actually spikes or manifests is if there's a lag because the magnet underneath this is rolling um, in accordance with this, but there's a slight lag due to friction and drag, of course. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place my left hand underneath the supercell and I'm gonna hold that magnet in place. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shift the relative position of the top magnet uh, to that of the one on the bottom, which is going to remain fixed in place as it is held by my hand. So I'm just gonna move this magnet around and uh, I'll give you a second to uh, think about what it is we'd see. The only reason we actually see light, of course the lines we actually see is constructive and destructive interference. But I want you to think just for a second, what will happen since right now we're basically seeing no light other than these lines. The only reason why we're seeing these lines is because they're actually separated by about a quarter of an inch through the glass. So what do you think, since we basically have no light here, will happen if I hold the bottom magnet in place and shift the upper magnet relative to the bottom one? What should actually happen as so far as either the pattern that we see or the light that we actually see? Because the light manifestation within the uh, supercell um, is super, super thin, by the way. Way, 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 way thinner than a human hair. It's only, uh, I forget the exact thickness. It's, uh, I forget how many microns it is, but it's infinitesimally nothing. So let's actually do that. So I'm gonna hold the bottom magnet in place. I'm gonna move this one relative to the bottom magnet. I'm gonna let go and let it jump back. Okay, now I'm actually still all this whole time holding the bottom magnet in place. And here we can actually see the uh, four poles, if you will, right here, these two uh, dark spots relative to the top magnet and the two dark spots relative to the bottom, bottom magnet that's being held in place. Of course, you'll actually see the light pulse as it actually here to the left. Notice you'll actually see right about here as I'm moving this magnet to the left you'll see a dark little hole if you will for lack of a better word form. You see right there? What do you think that is as far as the field representation that we're actually taking a look at? I'm trying to move my hand out of the way so you can see as much as is humanly possible. Here we go. Focus, there we go. You see that? You see how red it is right there, basically at the tip of my finger? At that, do you see that field torsion? People think a magnet emits magnetism, and it actually doesn't. The actual magnetic field that is within the proximity around a magnet has to do with the ether, not the magnet itself. A magnet doesn't emit anything. Well, sure it does. A magnet emits a magnetic field. Even a preschooler knows this. Well, that's actually not the case at all, nor does a light bulb actually emit light. It sets up a release of energy, manifestation of the EMR release. Just as a person in the middle of a pond who would be flapping their arms in the water, water, of course, being analogous to the ether, is not emitting anything. Of course, perturbations in the medium, in this case the water, is being set up, and of course waves manifest to the person flapping their arms or flailing their arms in the middle of a pond, but the person is not 
emitting anything. Isn't that beautiful? Take a look at that for a second. We're actually looking at some really strange torsion because I'm actually holding these two magnets apart. You see the white lines directly underneath my thumb? You see how bright those are? You see the phase shift and the color difference between the lines over here, which are yellow, and these lines over here that manifest as white? Let's so take a look at that again. Not only am I moving it actually this way, I'm actually moving it up this way. So I'm moving it outward, away, and upward. We actually have right here and here a magnet where no magnet actually is. And when I say that, I literally mean the field formation. If you see this S curve, this uh, curve linear right here, you see this. I can't actually point down to the bottom, but you see that? Okay. You can actually zoom in a little bit so you can see a little bit closer. But right here, we basically have no light, except for the fact that these are about a quarter of an inch apart. There would be no light at all. This is the lowest pressure mediation as chosen by Mother Nature. Magnetism is force in motion in a centrifugal divergence. The actual magnetic field is always trying to dump, for lack of a better word, back into counter space. Magnetic geometry, respectively, is the torus, and the dielectric geometry, of course, is the geometry of counter space, which is a hyperboloid. Actually zoom out a little bit here. There we go. Actually zoom in a little bit better so you can see. Maybe you would like me to zoom in even a little bit more. Actually, that's as far in as I can go. Sorry about that. And take a look. It's really quite beautiful. The dimensionality and the depth of the holography from something that is infinitely thinner than a human hair when you actually have one of these in your hand is nothing short of mind-blowing. And my god, I really effing mean that. Excuse my language. Now let's actually zoom out again. This time what we're going to do is we're going to place the magnet towards uh, Let's first do acceleration, okay? So now we've just got pull underneath pull, so I'm gonna actually approach them for so-called magnetic attraction, which does not exist. What we're actually looking at is dielectric acceleration. There's no such thing as magnetic attraction. Let me actually zoom in. This cell is already cooked, if you will. You can see these lines that have formed here. They're actually a little bit burned in. You see all these lines? That's why I actually have to rebuild these. If I actually place this one directly over top of the other, almost perfectly. There's almost nothing. You could tiny see a ring of light. The ring you're actually seeing would be like the rings of Saturn, like an accretion disk. And the only reason we're seeing this instead of nothing at all is because these magnets are still separated by about a quarter inch of two pieces of really thick glass. But if I separate them a little bit, let me zoom in a little bit better. I'm sure you'd like to see a little bit closer. There we go. I'll bring it to zero. I'm near zero and then separate them from one another. Okay. Now you notice is this is uh, what humans conventionally call magnetic attraction, which is dielectric acceleration. Magnetic attraction doesn't exist. We basically have no light except for the glass that's between these two. Since this is completely black, I'll give you a second to uh, make a conclusion if I place these like on like polarity, what we'll see. If we don't see any light here, and uh, as Mother Nature wishes them to be, what will happen when I flip this over so it's like on like polarity? And of course, this is what the fourth edition of my book is for, is actually to define polarity and many, many other things. You can actually look really closely here. See, it's really impossible to get them together, but let me hold it really tight. Focus, there we go, really tight. Get my fingers as much out of the way as possible. What do we see? I 
Imagine taking the top portion of a donut and squishing it into a cone. I was trying to think of the easiest geometry. Also, too, I'd like you to take a look at this, since this is a supercell and it is dying, if you will. Let me move it around a little bit to uh, clear the image. You see that red spot in the center? I actually showed you that in a prior video. Let me actually clear this up a little. It's almost like wiping a chalkboard when I do this. It spreads the nanoparticles of the ferrofluid within the surfactant. It clears it up a little bit. I'm just going to put the magnet with one pole facing up towards the camera in here. zoom in a little closer? I'll zoom in a little bit more. There we go. See that red spot looks like a tongue sticking out in the center? Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I wanted to give you an angle of view and something to think about that you'd uh, not seen before. A la the Supercell. And uh, if you'd like to build one yourself, the only thing you need is some mouse milk, some uh, ferrofluid you can get off of eBay, and two optically flat places of glass, and some hardware LEDs from Lowe's or Home Depot, right? Thank you so much for watching.